Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to Dr. Christos Lajos, CFO of the University of Nicosia in Cyprus. Christos, welcome to the Kaiser Report. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be on the show. All right, fantastic. Uh, now, your university is the first in the world to accept Bitcoin. Um, what? Tell us about it. Yeah, uh, actually, the University of Nicosia is an educational conglomerate, I would say. The, the University of uh, Nicosia is a conglomerate. It's a conglomerate because we have, apart from the university, we have a partnership with St. George's University of London. Uh, we have a medical school in Nicosia. We have colleges throughout all cities of Cyprus. We How have many students? 8,500 students. And, okay. we, and we have many campuses all over Europe and 2,000 students in online programs from all over the world. And you're the CFO, yeah. Chief Financial Officer, yeah. and you recognize an opportunity in Bitcoin uh, is this part of what happened when there was uh, a bail-in? Going back to earlier this year, remember, there was a huge bail-in, there was a confiscation of people's bank accounts. Is this what the bell rang and suddenly Bitcoin became something to do? Actually, it has nothing to do with the bailout and the crisis. We have been receiving requests from all over the world, from students in Africa, Asia, even America, who attend their university courses from their own countries and especially from students from under banned regions of the world who wanted to pay us in Bitcoin in the last couple of months. So we examined this issue, we uh, studied it, and we came up with the conclusion that paying through Bitcoins is an excellent payment uh, method for the students, cheapless, quicker, safer, uh, and we decided to adopt it because it has uh, tremendous advantages over the current, uh, the existing uh, payment through fiat currencies. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> you also offer degrees in cryptocurrencies, correct? In actually, it's a master's of science in digital currencies. How the uh, digital currencies will affect businesses, regulators, bankers, accountants, lawyers, uh, merchants, consumers. It's not uh, uh, actually a course in crypto cryptography. It's a course about the public at large and the businesses at large. How will this internet of money affect our everyday life? This is what we want to study in this uh, master's program. Okay, now one of the uh, questions people have about using Bitcoin in a practical sense is the large volatility. Mm -hmm. You see um, price movements from in, in hundreds of in dollars uh, in a day. As a CFO, a chief financial officer of a major university, uh, what are your thoughts there? Is that a problem or how do you address that? Yeah. Actually, uh, Bitcoin, as uh, all other currencies, can be used either as a means of exchange or as a store of value, as an investment. Uh, as a university, we would be using uh, Bitcoin as a form of exchange. It's an excellent form of exchange. As far as a store of value of investment is concerned, we will not be undertaking any risks. That is, we will be accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment and converting them to euros effectively. For example, if a student from Kenya wants to pay 1,000 euros and at the point of payment, the, the rate is 200 uh, euros to a, a Bitcoin. He will send us over five Bitcoins and immediately we'll convert it to 1,000. If the rate is 500, he will send over two, two Bitcoins and immediately we'll convert it to 1,000 euros. Right. So uh, your university might use a service like BitPay, for example, and they can convert any currency using the Bitcoin as a yep. transfer mechanism and then into the local currency, yep. really in the same transaction, you're taking no currency risk whatsoever. No. no. And an interesting point now, if you have students coming from Kenya mm -hmm. and, you're, and, and countries where the um, capita uh, per resident uh, is very, very low, um, if they're using Bitcoin, which is a much cheaper way to send money and use money, is it, is it, does it make a difference in terms of now suddenly there are more people who can get an education because of the cost uh, effectiveness of a Bitcoin? In other words, is it having an effect on the, the number of people now who can actually seek an education due to the cost uh, savings from a Bitcoin? Yeah, actually we are uh, launching a special uh, uh, scholarship program for students in uh, poor countries. It's called uh, UNICAF, University of Nicosia uh, Fund that we will be offering special scholarships to students from poor uh, countries and also giving them the opportunity to pay through Bitcoin, which will make their studies even more cheaper, more attractive. Right. So here's another use of Bitcoin, which, as far as I know, has never been discussed. 
it's lowering the barrier to entry for higher education yeah. for millions of people due to its cost efficient efficiencies. And this, of course, will then mean a lot more educational opportunities all over the world. And as your university in Cyprus, I take it, would be the first to do this anywhere in the world. But the more would follow, I would think. Yes, actually, that's, I believe that behind all this worldwide media attention is the fact that you have pointed out, Max, that uh, it's an initiative that will make uh, uh, education more attractive to poor students all over the world. I believe it's one of uh, the uh, most att attractive advantages of Bitcoin. All right, now let's talk about Cyprus because Bitcoin was trending higher over a number of years and people were looking at this thing as a curiosity more than anything else. And then suddenly there was a the huge crisis in Cyprus. The price spiked from 40 to 260. And people realize that, wait, this is really a way for folks that are being abused by the banking system to preserve their wealth, to escape the abuse of the banking system. You were in Cyprus at the time. What was the feeling on the street? Was, was, was it really, because from the outside, we, we have the impression that it was spread like wildfire. Suddenly Bitcoin emerged and, and, and it was talked about immensely. Is that true or what was really going on? Yeah. Actually, at that time, back in uh, March and April of this year, when we had the bail-in, uh, people uh, in the streets didn't really know about, uh, about Bitcoin. Uh, actually, uh, everything that was happening uh, around Bitcoin at that time was uh, mainly from uh, Bitcoiners in the community outside Cyprus. Only a few people knew about, about Bitcoin. And uh, I believe that, uh, that uh, the price increase and then uh, the crash uh, in the price of Bitcoin, uh, went unnoticed in Cyprus, I would say. Okay, so uh, more uh, more activity really outside of Cyprus than than inside Cyprus itself. Yeah. But nevertheless, it did kickstart a uh, tremendous move uh, from the double digits to the triple digits, and now the quadruple digits. When you said earlier that it's both a means of uh, payment and also a store of value, um, let's talk about the store of value for a second, because some are estimating that. You could look at a Bitcoin as you would a precious stone, like a diamond, and it could be uh, worth a million dollars per Bitcoin. Even Hugh Hendry, who's a respected uh, hedge fund manager here in London, recently has said that Bitcoin could be worth a million dollars per Bitcoin. Ron Paul, a famous politician in America, has come out recently and said that he thinks that Bitcoin is the killer of the US dollar. And we'll get to that for, in a second. But what do you think about this idea that the price could trade up to you know a million dollars per bitcoin can you talk a little bit about that yeah as i said as a university as an institution we uh, wanted to get a very serious study about bitcoin about uh, the, the advantages uh, and so on and so forth and uh, we have decided to accept it as a means of exchange uh, we are not taking any position as a university uh, about uh, the potential of uh, of bitcoin as a store of value I have, of course, my own personal uh, opinion about that, but... Uh, and what uh, is your personal opinion <laughs> about that? I believe that there is uh, a lot of potential for Bitcoin to become uh, uh, a superb store of wealth, but that's my personal opinion. Okay, let's circle back then to this question about what Ron Paul was saying recently. Ron Paul, I think he's a pretty well-known politician around the world, really, because he's been uh, out front in criticizing the Federal Reserve Bank in America. Uh, which is an analogous to the European Central Bank. And the European Central Bank, of course, has a direct impact on what happens in Cyprus and other peripheral countries uh, such as Greece. And these central banks, whether it's the Bank of England or Bank of Japan, they're all really coordinating under the master central bank, the Bank of International Settlements in Switzerland. And uh, Ron Paul has been critical of this entire central bank centralized monetary authority that seems to favor one element in society, that is those who have access to money at 0% interest rates for speculation, while penalizing workers and savers. But the linchpin of this entire global central bank system is the US dollar as reserve currency. As a CFO of a major university, your thoughts on can the US dollar continue this role as world reserve currency? Uh, and uh, is it good or is it bad? And, and can Bitcoin challenge that role? I, be, I believe there is a lot of logic in uh, what you have outlined right now. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, the dollar will continue to, to play the role that uh, is playing currently, but uh, it will have to face, uh, and it will face a lot of challenge from Bitcoin, I can assure you that.
Okay, so basically, what I'm getting so far is that you're very happy that Bitcoin has enabled your university to get more students at a better price and, 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 and expedite the, the whole educational process. And that's the main emphasis behind supporting Bitcoin. That's true. However, uh, we have uh, much more ambition uh, as far as Bitcoin is concerned. We want through this proposal that we have made to the Cyprus government to convert Cyprus into a hub, a worldwide hub for uh, Bitcoin uh, trading, uh, processing and banking. And we have made this, uh, specific proposals to the government as to how we can achieve that. You know, as a country, we don't have a lot of export capabilities. We have tourism, we have private universities, but we don't really export anything. However, we have a, a once in a lifetime opportunity now with Bitcoin to convert the Cypriot economy into a hub for worldwide trading, pay, payment systems, banking, based on Bitcoin. Let me get this straight. So you're saying that you are petitioning the government to allow for Cyprus to become a global hub of Bitcoin activity as, as, uh, and take the lead position. So while other countries are thinking about it and trying to examine it, like the US or the UK, they're not sure exactly what it is and there's a lot of lobbying efforts from the banking industry really against it because it's competition. Cyprus is now, you're lobbying the government, take a position. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We want to be a world leader and we want the business. We're open for business for Bitcoin. Is that the message, that's Cyprus? That's it, that's it. We want to make, uh, make Cyprus the center of the world as far as Bitcoin trading, processing, and banking is concerned. Uh, do we have about a minute left? Can you describe some of those initiatives? Yeah, for, uh, for example, the government can make a public statement that uh, Bitcoin businesses are very welcome in Cyprus. Uh, we can have uh, Bitcoin being traded in the official Cyprus Stock Exchange. Uh, it will be the first official The Bitcoin state. will be traded on the Cyprus Stock Exchange. This is one of our that's, proposals. That's a proposal. Yeah, uh, imagine now having uh, an authorized stock exchange under the auspices of the government, uh, having uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, trading. It will attract trading from all over the world. Uh, we will have uh, uh, related uh, businesses and services being uh, developed. We will create thousands of, of new jobs. Uh, the opportunity is great. So and like Singapore is the Asian hub for banking and London is certainly a hub in Europe for banking. Cyprus could be a Bitcoin hub. Uh, for the globe in Bitcoin trading and, and, yep. and related services. That's your, that's your hope, that's your thought. Yep. Yep. The government so far, we have about 20 seconds, the government so far, what has been their response? Uh, the, the Minister of Finance has been uh, asked about this in, uh, from worldwide channels uh, in the last couple of days. And uh, uh, he said that uh, they are very positive and uh, they will uh, study this very carefully in the next uh, coming days. All right, fantastic. Well, we wish you luck. I think one country will be the big winner. It could be Cyprus. Uh, it could be. We want it to be, and we'll make every effort. Well, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you very much. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I'd like to thank our guest, Dr. Christos Vlachos of the University of Nicosia in Cyprus. If you'd like to get in touch, tweet us at Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.